robots, boxing. What else do you need? Find out now on Movieology. A gritty white knuckle action ride set in the near future where sport of boxing has gone high tech, Real Steel is about Charlie Kenton, a washed up fighter who's lost his chance at a winning title when 2,000 pound 8 foot tall steel robots took over the ring. Now nothing but a small time promoter, Charlie earns just enough money piecing together low end bots from scrap metal to get from one underground boxing venue to the next. When Charlie hits rock bottom, he reluctantly teams up with his estranged son Max to build and train a championship contender. As the stakes in the brutal no holds barred arena are raised, Charlie and Max against all odds get one last shot at a comeback in a boxing ring as united father and son. Real Steel stars Hugh Jackman, Evangeline Lilly, and Dakota Goyo. It was directed by Sean Levy. Welcome to Movieology, your ticket to engaging the spectacular world of film from the bedrock of biblical truth. I am Joseph Darnell. So when I initially saw the teaser trailer for Real Steel several months ago, we at Movieology were like, what? Rock'em Sock'em robots for realsies? Who is going to take this seriously? Well, I was thrilled to find out that Real Steel isn't limited by its premise in any sense. Real Steel has about as much to do with Rock'em Sock'em toys as Star Wars has to do with space. And thankfully a whole lot less to do with George Lucas. In case you are curious about the movie's origin like I was, Real Steel is based on a short story by Richard Matheson that was published in 1956. That story inspired this movie as well as an episode of the original TV series The Twilight Zone. In 1963, episode 122 of season 5, Steel is an episode about a man's pretending to be a robot in a robot boxing competition. I'm kind of interested in seeing it if I can track it down. Anyway, it's not very often that I'm truly excited about a film as I watch it in the theater seats. But Real Steel more than made me totally psyched about the progression of an unlikely father-son team that strive as underdogs to do the seemingly impossible in a totally fictitious sports medium. Given that the robot boxing isn't true to today's technology, and not even close people, I expected to feel a disconnect with the sci-fi elements of the boxing robots. So I think the filmmakers knew that to act out the bots and their believability right, they couldn't knowingly suggest in the film that they were inherently cool or realistic bots. I think Michael Bay made this mistake in the Transformers films, as you get the impression the audience is supposed to be impressed by the Transformers' cool and realistic factors, even when there isn't a real cool or realistic factor to them. In Real Steel, it's like the filmmaker said, we can't force the cool or realistic factors, so let us be authentic and modest about the coolness. And this worked. With Real Steel having a production budget of $110 million, director Sean Levy chose to begin the film's story in state fairs and other old-fashioned Americana settings that would exude nostalgia and create a, for a warm tone for the film's father-son story. As the movie unfolds, the most expensive and advanced robots and pro-level boxing arenas replace the junkyard bots and old-fashioned locales till the film ends in the arena that represents the pinnacle of professional robot boxing, which looks like it would be the most expensive or one of the most expensive sports stadiums on earth. At times, Real Steel is all about the fighting in the ring with the geekiness of a video game tethered to pro boxing. At other times, it's all about the emotionally charged father-son relationship. The strength in these two central plots is how well they're weaved together. The pace of the drama mixed with the high-octane action made great entertainment value. The visuals and the effects are top-notch so that the seemingly unbelievable moments are easily overlooked, like when a robot fights a bull and loses. There's a subplot where a bet goes awry for the protagonist that doesn't live up to the other parts of the film. But I say that little about this movie's presentation is dislikable. 
That said, there are some action montages set to music that show time passing quickly. This frees the storytelling up to show lots of progression in an accelerated rate. So these were used to keep the movie from running too long for general audiences, but they took me out of the story's emotional progression. Other than this shortcoming of the montages, I thought the soundtrack was mediocre whenever it played punk rock in the place of some dynamic orchestral music. But this is forgivable, since it's suitable for the pro-boxing culture themes in the film. Now there would be no substance to real still if it wasn't for the compelling dramatic storyline of the father and son relationship. Charlie, the father, is a loser when it comes to robot boxing and parenting. Faced with the end of his worldly assets and livelihood, it's clear that he needs to change his act. He cannot go on as a thief, a gambler, and a liar looking solely after himself. So when Max, Charlie's son, comes along, we see the boy is wise beyond his father's years, yet he wants to see his father excel more than anything else. Max is a well-developed product of his deceased mother that's in contrast to the foolishness of his father. Even after Charlie does some despicable things against his son, Max is ever forgiving and sacrificial. His son's nature wakes him up to recognize the areas that he needs to mature in. The supporting character, Bailey Tallett, as a surrogate mother and wife-to-be figure, reminds Charlie continuously of the importance of the father-son relationship and building a family legacy. Real Steel creatively shows us the importance of fathers and mothers' active parental roles, and that fathers and sons are greater together than they are separated, and that even the greatest of betrayals a father can commit against his son is still forgivable. I find it ironic that the secular film like you know, this film, Real Steel, and a Christian film like Courageous are in theaters at the same time having so much in common. If you have seen both of these films, I would like you to write a comment on their similarities and contrasting qualities. Anyhow, without the father and the son business partnering, their robot, Adam, in the boxing competitions would not exist. The father needs the son, and the son needs the father to produce worldly good. By the time that their mech is winning competitions, Charlie has matured to the point that he wants to restore his parental role and pay off his business debts. As a dynamic father and son team with the robot that shadows them, I see this group as symbolic because their robot Adam reminded me of the Holy Spirit, making the group uh, you know, of these three characters something of a metaphor for the Holy Trinity. Now grant you, it's a dim and flawed reflection of the Trinity. But it's surprisingly there nonetheless. This probably wasn't intended by the filmmakers, but it is seen in the subtext of the film so that one recognizes the depth and value of a Trinity model without necessarily connecting this to Christianity. It's shown in a way that is a metaphysical attractive concept. So what is the basis for the complex ethical standards and traditional family values in Real Steel? We'll take a look at these topics and my star rating after our sponsor. American Vision is a biblical worldview ministry. They have some of the best resources for history, apologetics, eschatology, and worldview studies. Movieology fans like you are treated to 10% off all purchases at AmericanVision.com when you use the coupon code HOLLYWOOD during checkout. Movieology followers should especially appreciate Hollywood worldviews and the message behind the movie. Two excellent books available at AmericanVision.com. In terms of morality, Real still holds to American traditions of a nuclear family as the ideal. Those historical values were based on Judeo-Christian ethics found in the Bible. But to be fairly realistic, the movie reflects the modern broken household, far removed from faith and religious values. Max's mother has done the best that she could to raise Max till she tragically passes away. Then it's up to Charlie to take responsibility for his son late in Max's childhood. Real Steel makes it apparent that a father and son's bond is universal and unavoidable, like there's something transcendently beckoning the two of them together. Hmm, what could that be? So in a way, the film may be interpreted to respect an, an intelligent designer's influence over the intended function of the family unit. The Sovereign Lord over the universe is also referred to once when Charlie urges his son Max to pray that they will win a boxing match. However, Real still has all the air marks of humanism as well. Charlie is convinced by his son to be a better father so that he can be his greatest human potential. The father and son robot Adam is competing against a robot named Zeus who represents a man-made version of a deity. 
In Adam's effort to beat Zeus in the boxing ring, the never-defeated, infinitely advanced robot opponent, we see mankind attempting to defeat this robot god with a product of man's creation. If man's bot can defeat the bot of the gods, then how is man not greater or equal with the gods? The humanist worldview is driven home when Adam is proclaimed the champion of the people. I give Real Steel four stars out of five that are well earned. Where it's weak is in the shallow quality of the father-son relationship that's devoid of discipleship, but it's an especially entertaining father-son bonding story that advances positive themes of family legacy, man's domain over the creation, and the power of sacrificial love. And I'm over time. I'd love if you would add your own thoughts about this movie in a comment. Remember to watch Movieology on the website, movieology.tv, the source for worldview enthusiasts, news, reviews, and discussion of all things film. And please don't forget to share Movieology with your friends and family that like to discuss movies. I'm Joseph Darnell. Until next time, thank you for watching Movieology. Tony the father is a loser when it comes to robot boxing and parenting. Faced with the end of his worldly assets and childhood, life childhood, is it worldly assets in his childhood? <laughs> As the stakes in the brutal no nonsense, no nonsense, no holds barred arena are char Charlie <laughs> produce worldly good. By the time that their mech is winning, Real Steel creatively shows us the importance of family, family, you know, families, and everything that's in them, like kids and adults. The supporting character.